Okay. I think I might have escaped the Daleks for now. But, well, I think going into a wooded area, you know, very grassy, very, very low key. I've uh, put my phone into flight mode. So, it shouldn't be able to track me that way. And also, the Daleks reason that should be harder to track me in general. I still though, haven't figured out what they want. I mean, why not kill me? Why not kill me? They're guns. They're guns. The Dalek shot at me several times, but... Well, surely it should have left some damage on something. But it didn't. Now, why is that? You see, here's my theory on it. Perhaps the Dalek gun, maybe it doesn't have enough energy to kill me. Perhaps that's the reason. I don't know. Either way, let's continue this way. Down this path. I'll keep these up to date with everything, but hopefully, you know, out here for a bit. I should be safe, right? I'm not sure whether I'm being followed or not. Right, hopefully I'm being blasted with enough light for you to be able to see everything. Because uh, despite it being um, half past two in the afternoon, it is literally it's pretty dull and dark. So yeah, I'm having to blast my room with as much light as possible. But anyway, as you can see, there's a package that has come. And as you can also see, I'm opening it. This is a thing that happens in these videos. One should be used to it by now. I could have used a knife, but I don't want to damage what's inside. Plus, I couldn't be arsed either. Oop. Here it is, Doctor Who, variations on a theme, catchy title, the limited edition version, uh, what's the difference between this version and the limited edition, uh, sorry, what's the difference between this version and the standard, a different, uh, standard edition version, as far as I can tell, absolutely nothing apart from on this one, it's a reflective gold colour, and on the, the uh, standard, it's a reflective silver. Big fucking whoop. So yeah, this is a vinyl record. Let's actually see what condition this is in. So, other than being a bit dusty, it looks pretty good. And interestingly, it's a 12 inch 45 RPM. So what tracks have we got on here? Doctor Who... Mood version, arranged and performed and produced by Mark Arise. Okay. Doctor Who Terror version, arranged and performed by Dominic Glem, produced by Dominic Glem and Martin Smith, and arranged by Grange Studios. Okay. Side 2 Doctor Who Latin version. A range performed and produced by Kef McCulloch, McCloth, I don't know. And then, fuck, I cannot pronounce that word. Panop, here we go. Panopticon Eight Regeneration Mix, a range and performed and produced by Mark Rees. Rise. Yeah. So, original sound of the nineteen eighty nine. Okay. 
So I guess we used to have a look on the back. Come on, uh, that's all the stuff I just read out. Yeah, I actually read it out for once. Uh, the condition of this is uh, alright, it's not too bad. And considering this cost me under a tenner, um, I think it cost me about, including postage, I think it was about eight or nine pound. Yeah, I'm pretty happy uh, with this. And uh, obviously I can't play any of it uh, on camera for two reasons. One, YouTube will bl bloody get me for copyright. Even though fair use, if I'm just playing a bit and that or whatever, fuck it. And two, uh, well, as you can see, I'm at home and not at my granny's. And at, granny at my granny's house is where my turntable is, so yeah, I can't play this here uh, regardless. I'm going to have to be taking it there. So yeah, you can also see this being pressed up against a record shelf along some other records because you've got that typical line around there. Around there, so basically this is being slotted in someone's shelf for god knows how many years. But that doesn't matter now, Alex Mike. The only problem with these really thin records is uh, there's nothing on the spine because the spine is so thin. So it's a bit annoying when um, I put this in my shelf. Because the thing is, uh, I will not have a fucking clue what it is until I pull it out. And actually, it'll be hard to see as well, which is why so it is pretty irritating when records don't have a thick enough spine to actually have some text on there. This this one is just uh, absolutely nothing. Also, the record seems to be sliding around in here. Um, I might see if I can get a sleeve for it, uh, just so it's not rolling around in cardboard. In fact, yeah, I'll probably have it split up right like this. Anyhow, that's that knit nut paddywhack. I'm gonna give my dog a bone. Yay. Okay, so got a package from Amazon that has just arrived at quarter to seven at night on a Sunday. But fuck it. <laughs> Whatever. Um it's gonna arrive today then. Yeah, fair enough. Here it is. It is Sill. I forgot what the title is. Sill and the Devil Seeds of Arador. Yay. So yeah, this is the uh, limited edition Blu-ray. Which, uh, at the time of recording this... What's the date today? On the 10th of November, so yeah, this came out this week. And I finally have my copy of it. It's also available on DVD, uh, for those who care. But uh, the Blu-ray is apparently limited. How limited? I don't know. <clears throat> also, I notice uh, the comes up a bit short, but anyway. Having a look at the cover. Yeah, to be honest, there's not going to be much to say about this, and I don't really know <coughs> much about it, other than the fact that it stars Neil S Nabil as Sil. That's literally all I knew about it, and to be honest, I just pre-ordered it. In fact, when I did pre-order this, uh, this was not the cover art image, actually. But yeah, I'm actually, you know... Um, I'll actually read uh, the blurb. An original drama featuring Sil, the ruthless alien emp. You know, I'm not going to read it actually. <clears throat> because my throat is killing me. Um, the league scenes, bonus features. Um, you know what? I'll read that in your own time. But yeah, uh, how long is this? 100 minutes to an hour 40. Plus 60 minutes of special features. Looks good. Again, it's got the little notches for a second disc. A lot of Blu-ray cases have this. I was hoping that maybe it'd be a reversible cover. <clears throat> but it's not. And again, got the Blu-ray watch. 
NTSC all. Okay, so, so re this is also a region free Blu-ray. So basically, no matter where you are in the world, this will work. So uh, you know, if you're in America or somewhere, it, then yeah, you can import it. No bother, and just play it without any questions. Me, have a guess what I'm going to do with it. Really though, ha have a guess. You not guess yet? Well, clearly you don't know this channel. <laughs> I'm going to rip it! So yeah, I'm uh, going to rip it to MP4, mainly so I can have it backed up on an external hard drive, but also it makes it easier where I can watch it on my tablet and whatever else. So that's what I'm going to do with that. So yeah, um, I think this was £16-odd or something like that. I can't exactly remember. Something along those lines, but yeah. I am uh, glad to have it nonetheless. And uh, hey, if I watch it and uh, it's still the same video, then I'll let you know how it turned out. Well, kids, looks like we got another thing to unbox. Let's get our safety knives. Yeah, yeah, knives are for safety, you know that? I mean, why do you think they're in the ute, the new so much now, eh? Knives are for safety. I mean, what else could you use them for? I guess, uh, you know, cooking and stuff, but, uh, you know, our knives, they're for safety. So yeah, if I can get these things open. That. Oh yes. Right. So we've got two big finish cassettes. We have got the Shadow of the Shrug. I don't know, I've never I, I'm actually listening to this story before. Or this one. Well we've also got the I'm bringing this back to the fire of Vulcan. Fires. Sorry, plural. Also, if you take a look at the back, there's an advertisement for Big Finish's website. Wow, it's an actual sticker. And actually, look at the back of these. They look actually uh, different to um, other Big Finish cassettes that I've got. But the, the difference with these ones is uh, they're actually sealed. Yeah, they're brand new. You might be thinking, well, there's just a bit of tape on there. Well, actually, this is how uh, a lot of cassettes were actually sealed uh, back in the day. Yeah, I'm not joking. A lot of them were. Especially if you ordered them by post, which I believe these probably would have had to be ordered by. It would literally just be, um, to cheapen costs, would just literally be a piece of sellotape to stop them from flicking open rather than being wrapped in a load of cellophane. So yeah, uh, so you know what that means, that I'm not going to be opening them. Um, I know it's just a piece of sellotape and I could always put it back, but to be honest, uh, this is just more to just have them in the collection uh, than anything else, because for one, these two are available on Big Finish's website for £3 each. Uh, for a digital copy and they're also available on Spotify as well so yeah I can listen to them that way as well but I do like having a physical copy of things and it's nice it's interesting that one of them is clear and the other one is uh, a bit frosted but I, I can actually see the cassettes through and the cassettes they do look brand new in there they, they literally there's no marks or scratches and that they do look new and unused so that's good so yeah uh, how much could I pay for these good question good question because normally I do like to tell you how much 
everything was. Um, so we'll have a look. Alright, so this one cost me three pound. This one cost me two fifty. And uh, with combined postage of um, £3.40. Interesting though, this one's postage was £3.40 on its own and this one was £2.50 on its own. I've no idea why, because they're both double cassettes, so really they should be the same price. But hey, whatever, the combined postage and that. So, you know, short under a tenner. So yeah, nice to have. Alright, so uh, we've got another package here. But before I get into this one, um, I'd just like to see that um, an Amazon package of mine, uh, well, it's mine for Christmas, has gone bloody missing. And uh, no, not the missing, uh, like, you know, it was lost in the post. No, 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 it was delivered to a neighbour. I just don't have a fucking clue which neighbour it is, and neither do Amazon. So, basically, they're going to be giving uh, me a refund for that. So, yeah. Why Amazon? They, they actually sent. They they did send something. They said uh, your parcel with is with your neighbour Gibson. Who the fuck is that? Why not just give me an address, you know, or a door number? I actually tried both neighbours on either side, and uh, even neighbours a couple, a few doors down, but none of them seem to have it. So, yeah, that thing has just frankly gone missing. But anyway, this thing off eBay has arrived. Doctor Who at the BBC. Hooray! So yeah, this is a part of that radio collection range. So, Elizabeth Sling and Nicholas Courtney take, take a journey through the archives and uncover the history of Doctor Who and BBC Radio Television. Uh, total running time, two hours and five minutes. And you know what? There's the information for you to read at your leisure. So, hooray for that. Anyway, let's have a look at them. And actually, say it with me, is this one. And you know what we're going to do with this? Come on. There we go. We're going to rip it. We're going to rip it. Now, since this looks like... Yeah, it does fold out that way. Okay. Uh, disc 2, same artwork and everything as disc 1. And you can see a nice image of the, the police box, which looks like from more than 30 years in the TARDIS, actually. And I'll pause that there, just in case the BBC tried to kill me. Again. Uh, let's have a look at the little boot collect. I'm curious whether... Oh yes, it has managed to find the track data, so that's good. So let's do that. Let's have a look at the booklet, shall we? Ooh. Oh, that's not very interesting. Uh, so it's basically giving information about the presenters. So basically, Elizabeth Sling was born in Liverpool. Nicholas Courtney was born in Egypt. And then just goes on with information that you'll probably already know. Uh, it does give you track listings, so that's good. And actually, uh, time code stamps as well. Which is, uh, like that, that is actually useful. Well done. And on the back here we've just got some uh, advertising for some other CDs. Come on within the range. So that's a nice one, good. Uh, it was, the sun was shining just before and now it seems to have completely gone so it's gotten considerably darker uh, in here. I should have probably put the lights on in preparation because literally the weather today is being really really weird. It's being heavy showers, 
then stopped for sunshine, then heavy shower again for about another, you know, five, ten minutes, stopped, sunshine again, then heavy shower, it's just like, it's bloody weird, and it's only just after 12, yeah, I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, how much could I pay for this? How much did I pay for this? Let me check my eBay. Um, okay, three pound plus one fifty post gig, so four fifty total. Yeah, actually, that's about fair for uh, this. I don't know how much they normally go for, um, but yeah, cheap price. I thought, why not? It could be good, could be pretty decent. So yeah, not you know, not an expensive thing. So why not? And it's something I can add to my ever-growing archive. I noticed the frame rate seems to um, increase a little bit in the dark actually which is weird. Normally cameras like really bright lighting for uh, higher frame rates but this one's gotten a bit darker and the frame rate seems to have gone up a bit. Yay! Okay I'm a bit bloody annoyed with the postman. Uh, you see this do not bend it's a vinyl record. Literally, the guy had a few parcels. One of them was considerably heavy, and he decided to hold it, it and bounce them on there, holding either end where it bent slightly. So I'm hoping it hasn't warped uh, the record. Because obviously, you know, that's clearly what this thing is. Luckily this thing is being reinforced with a bit of cardboard. Let's see that. Uh, looks okay. It, this is one of the dustiest records I've ever seen. But um, in case you're wondering what it is, there we go. It's Britney Spears. You drive me crazy. And um, on this one, um, we don't have uh, the regular version uh, at all. In fact, uh, the version um, that I mainly want this for is the Stop Remix, which uh, this is the only vinyl of it um, I can see because the Stop Remix has only been officially released on this, which is uh, the greatest hits. I can't press the focus on the camera. Come on. There we go. So yeah, it's only previously been released on the greatest hits, and um, since that's not available on vinyl yet, yeah, here we are. But I'm going to have to dust this quite a bit. Uh, in fact, I might even get the hoover to it with a cloth because, my God, that is one of the dustiest uh, records I've ever seen. There's no scratches on it, but, uh, yeah, it's one of the dustiest records I've legitimately ever seen. But, anyway, it's... Good to have this in the collection. Uh, this cost me £8 with uh, free delivery. Which, um, you know, that's not bad. I mean, I can clearly see that they sent it out as a large letter. I think I can see a first class uh, large postage stamp on it. But yeah, um, 8 quid for a 12 inch single. That's not bad. Uh, to be honest, and there's four versions of the song. The longest being uh, 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah. I do prefer the Scott remix to uh, the regular version, eh, we? The uh, regular version um, is uh, actually available on vinyl on Britney Spears' first album. Um, to be honest, there's not a huge amount of Britney Spears songs that I actually like, but the ones that I do like, I do really like, so... Yeah, I saw that on eBay and I thought, why not? And I bought it. There it is. Hooray. Okay, let's try and make this one as uh, quick as possible because I've got some homemade wedges back there that I would uh, like to eat. 
So yeah, anyway. I'm gonna need the knife. Oh, finally, been waiting a little while for this. Doctor Who, The Dalek Occupation of Winter. What a bloody title that is. And uh, the person who had this before me has swapped it for uh, the black and white alternate cover rather than this one. I prefer that one anyway. Because it doesn't have a fuck it, that fucking logo on it. So yeah, this is a two disc set. So it'll be a four-part story. Um, I uh, picked this up for... How much did I pay for this? I don't think I paid much. Uh, purchases... Okay, 479 plus 169 um, postage. So it was... Uh, <coughs> Just go over six quid for this. Which uh, is a pretty good price, and to be honest, even if this went on sale, it would probably be six pound plus post gigs, so I'm uh, pretty happy with that one, to be honest. Yeah, I can't really see much uh, other than that. I will um, be uh, ripping this uh, and then putting a mp3 tag on it so it has the artwork on while I listen to it um, on my phone later on so yeah and that's a goody goody drum drop yay okay so uh, I went to a market today a flea market and uh, I picked up this Doctor Who the Monsters this is the 1992 uh, edition. Yeah, and then it's weird how they do that. But yeah, uh, this cost uh, a fiver. Uh, I tried bartering. I tried. I had three pound eighty-five change in my pocket. I said, "Will you see it?" They said, "No." So I had to go and get a fiver. But yeah, um, here it is. Uh, he also had the classic 1980s version. But I decided to get the 1990s version, and the artwork is done by Andrew Skillinger. Skillinger? 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 I don't know. I don't pronounce it, but uh, yeah. So you will recognise a bit of his artwork, and it is a nice uh, way to get some of his artwork. It does look really nice and uh, impressive. It's hard to show this all on camera because it is pretty large. Uh, yeah, that's a nice illustration there of some some tarans. I'm not really going to show much of this. I'll just show mm, basically the artwork that I think you'll find interesting. Cameron. Try and find. Okay. Actually, you know what? Boom. We're going in a handheld mode for this. So there's a nice artwork from Se Seeds of Death. Oh, excellent. That's some nice artwork there. Oh, this is actually, um
Fourth Doctor has got the wrong costume. Is there an index on this thing? I should have probably looked actually. Uh, no contact. Oh. So yeah, this is just like the other monks goes so mm. So you basically you know the other one has Dallas, Cybermen, you know the usual, uh, this one has um some are like the second tier monks goes really. Mm, maybe not the Sunk Towers. Maybe not the Ice Warriors these gears, but uh yeah. That's that and I'm quite happy to have it to be honest. As it is uh, quite nice. Yay. This thing came with a free elastic band. Yeah, it's plastic lying. I literally can't be asked in the minute. Oh, my feet are killing. Ooh. Wait. I just realised uh, my um, cassette boombox is uh, being turned on and running off uh, the batteries the whole time. That's probably flattened it. I'm great. Anyway. Can you guess what this is? It's from Big Finish, although they didn't make it. They're just distribu uh, distributing this. Yeah, the Tenth Doctor novels. Uh, these are... Was this the... F these are like the MIG-Teal... Not mig -tier, um mid-era ones, uh, basically these are the ones that have my thing. I was interested to see what type of box uh, it would be in, considering the amount of discs anyway. Here we are. So it looks like I have a... I accidentally pressed stop there. Let's just have a look see what's included, eh? I don't know, because I wasn't actually looking. Um, this was actually on a seal on Big Finish. This is a website, um, I think I, in total I think I paid about £7 for this, including the postage. So it includes Sting of the Zygons, The Last Dodo, uh, Wooden Heart, Forever Autumn, Wet World, Sick Building, that building is sick yo, <laughs> uh, The Pirate Loop and uh, Peacemaker, whereby uh, Reggie, Reggie Yakes, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Free Matt Agreement, who plays Martha, so go figure. Agjona Ado, again, probably not pronouncing that right. And uh, Will Thorpe. Yeah, and it is a 16 disc set. Ah, okay. So it's one of these ones where the discs are literally just stacked on top of each other. Which I'm not a big fan of, to be honest. Uh, oh, and they're just in there kind of loosely as well. Yeah, so the these discs also can just... Look, they can just move around. It's not very smart designed packaging. It feels... Yeah, pretty shit. To be honest. Um, yeah. Because look, if you close this up fully, that's the discs moving around. Not very impressed that, and also, uh, that TARDIS. Yeah, P PNG clearly, sissy. Um, yeah, all right then. Uh, but they do re they do really move around these discs. We also got no booklet on that, and unfortunately, yeah, it's the case. Unfortunately, it is the same um, artwork on each disc. Fortunately, they do tell you um, 
the name of each story on each disc and what disc it is. So I'll give it that. I will give it that. Uh, that is telling you which disc is which. Uh, but yeah, at some point I will um, be ripping all of these to uh, MP3 to uh, listen to them so I can listen to them on my phone because um, this is cheaper uh, than just getting them than just getting the MP3s on their own. The MP3s on their own, I think, were about twenty pounds. If I remember rightly, and this cost about seven quid, so yeah, this way I do get a physical copy, and I'm just easily rip them. Uh, and actually, it's actually better for me actually ripping them from the discs like this because I can't confirm because I don't actually have the digital copy of this. Um, but I'm assuming with the digital copy, it probably just have this artwork throughout. Where at least if I rip each CD individually I can put the original um, CD artwork on there uh, using mp3 tags so when I'm listening to them on my phone it'll show this art, uh, the original artwork rather than just you know this basic one which is a bit eh. yeah it's it is not particularly great as well uh, there's also there's also I just realised unless it's un yeah the, there's since there's no booklet on that uh, there's no like little descriptions or anything uh, about them so it's a little bit irritating. Also, this took a while to arrive as well. It took um oh about three weeks to arrive and it was due to stock apparently a load of people um, bought this one in particular. Because, A, this was the cheapest thing for 16 discs. Yeah, I can't blame them. Can't blame them. It's amazing that 16 discs, though, can fit into something uh, this small. It is pretty damn small. I mean, it's thinner than um, a regular big fit finish, even. In fact, uh, actually, have I got some? Yeah, I do. Oh, shit. I just knocked a load of things over. I was going to do a comparison to some actual CDs and I've literally just knocked a ton of fucking things over. Oh my god. Oh shit, shit, shit. Oh my god. Uh, thankfully, it looks like nothing's damaged, but... Oh, God, my God. My God, some of this... Some of this stuff I haven't even opened yet. And it's just all fallen down. And yeah, I think I tried to put too much stuff on there. Anyway, what was I getting on to? Oh, yes. Trying to compare it to the CDs, unfortunately, they've all fallen back down there. Oh well, let's end, it. let's end this now. I got this. At some point, I will listen to them. Um, particularly, um, I mean, to be honest, I mainly just got this one uh, for Sting of the Zygons. To be honest. Um, and uh, the last dodo sounds interesting. And Forever Autumn is uh, Halloween. It's kind of like a Halloween special sort of thing. So, hmm. Yeah. Okay, something's interfered with the signal. Same thing there. Okay, we keep going. We keep going deeper. Okay. Okay. There was some interference. 
I don't know what happened to found this. Let's go. So. The only thing I can do is uh, just keep going, I guess. Continue to keep going. Although I don't think the Daleks... Ah. Oh. What's that? The hell? I saw something that looks vaguely like a face. They checked them out there in the, the distance. I saw something that looks like... It looked like a Thomas the Tank Engine face. To be honest, it looked like one of those... Like... You know, the classic Tom Scan Gang shirt looked like that. I don't know. All I can do is keep going. But not too quickly. Not too slowly at the same time. Don't want to do too quickly. That'll make too much noise. And I don't want to run into anything uh, unsettling. So, you know... Just continue. I've got a face mask in my pocket if I need it. Uh, got a hand sanitizer as well. Okay. It's getting darker and deeper. The more I go, the pathway's almost gone. It's just kind of wooded, kind of gone off the trail now. It's only sort of fake, faint, I should say, glimmers. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a post. Uh, yeah, actually that's not a post, that's a bit of a, a broken tree. Yeah. Let me see, can I put the torch on? No, it will not let me put the torch on. Okay. Damage here. Must be recent. Look at that snapped off. I feel as if something's following me out here. And that, that is not done by the Daleks. It's not their style, they won't just leave a, a chopped down tree like that. Well, it's not even chopped down, it's been pushed aside okay. I think heading deeper in this way is a bad idea so I think there was a clearing around here somewhere right so that's back the way I came Heading that way is a bad idea. Back down there is a bad idea. I think I should head into somewhere open, somewhere nice and clear. Okay. Okay. Let's kick on the path. You never know that grass is pretty tall. You never know what could be hiding out there in that. So let's get to the path. Let's get to the path. Okay. Looks like there's a 
remains of a gate. It's just being completely destroyed. Where's the gate then? There was clearly evidence of a gate being there. Where's the gate gone? Where's everything? Why is this area all clear like this? There's just nothing here. I don't get it. Why is this area clear? I don't know. I don't like it. Something is going on out here. I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm standing on top of whatever this is. It gives me a good uh, vantage point though. I can actually see everything now. So that's good. Yeah. This thing is heavy. Bits of wood, bits of piping, all sorts. It's weird. It's a smell of smoke. Trust, I can't identify it. Because I know what cigarettes smell like. That's well, pretty obvious what cigarettes smell like. And you can always tell when someone's barbecuing because that smoke is pretty thick. You can always tell. This smoke. I don't know. Almost smells fresh. It's like someone's been burning something. Looks like a butterfly fluttering. Yeah, but smell. Look at that. Skull pulled off there. Who knows what this was for? Anyway, uh Whoa. A little bit of a jump there. Is that a face? That looks like a face carved into there. What's that? Round a bit there. Is that being held up by? I don't understand what this is. It's like just piles of stones. I mean, what is its purpose? Dictionary. More wood. <sighs> Things are just not adding up. And I do not fancy walking into that dark area right now. And... <laughs> 